Hello, friend. How would you like to lose 10 pounds in the next seven days without having to exercise at all? How would you like to follow the little known diet that celebrities and soldiers use to lose weight fast? Well, that's the pitch of the military diet, which is getting a lot of attention these days and which is strangely named because we actually don't know where the idea even came from. No military that we know of uses this diet for anything whatsoever. No government recommends it. It looks like it's just yet another marketing gimmick, which of course is no surprise. But regardless, this diet is out there and a lot of people are searching for it, are doing it, and are reporting success with it. And so, should you try it? Well, the first thing you should know is there's nothing inherently special about this diet. It's just a low calorie, you could even say very low calorie diet that entails eating about 1,000 calories three days a week, and then no more than 1,500 calories four days a week. And you're supposed to alternate between the low calorie days and the higher calorie days. The idea here is that you just use this to reach your goal and then you go back to normal eating. This is not supposed to be some long-term diet or sustainable diet. It's very unsustainable. And that's kind of the point because drastic measures can produce drastic results. Another thing that many people find appealing about the military diet is you don't have to exercise because you are not eating very much food. So you're creating a rather large calorie deficit regardless of whether you exercise or not. And that's why there are people out there who can lose five, six, seven, eight, not even 10 pounds in their first week. Now, that's not going to be all fat. Remember that a lot of that is going to be water and glycogen, which is a form of carbohydrate that's stored in your liver and in your muscles and that is vacated when you dramatically drop your carbs, which you're going to have to do on the military diet. So while losing uh, a fair amount of weight, just poundage in the first weight, in the first week can be appealing. Remember, that's not fat. Of course, you are going to lose fat in that first week and you are going to lose more fat on the military diet than you would on a more reasonable diet that doesn't have you more or less starving yourself. But there are some consequences that we'll get to in a minute. First, however, I just want to give you an idea of what eating is like on the military diet. So here is day one. This would be a low calorie day. So for your breakfast, we have one half of a grapefruit. We have a slice of toast, two tablespoons of peanut butter, a cup of black coffee or tea for a total of 327 calories. That's it for breakfast. Now we move on to lunch, which is one half of a cup of tuna, a slice of toast, and another cup of coffee. That's it. Total calories, 211. And then we move on to dinner, which is just three ounces of any lean meat. And that would be raw, I'm assuming. Uh, a cup of green beans, one small apple, and one cup of vanilla ice cream. That's a uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend the vanilla ice cream if you're only eating this many calories. I'd recommend to take that 274 calories that's allotted, allotted to ice cream and uh, use it on vegetables instead. But regardless, that's a dinner of 523 calories for a total intake of 1,061 calories for the day. Now, the next couple days on this plan are similar. They have some different food choices, like we have some cheddar cheese here. We have some hot dogs. Again, I'm not, not, that I would, not what I'd recommend, but there's always that vanilla ice cream. Uh, but it's more or less the same thing not a lot of food. And so the idea then is you starve yourself a couple days of the week, and then you can eat quote unquote, whatever you want on the other days, but no more than 1500 calories of whatever you want. So that's still pretty restrictive. If you go into Excel, fire up your, your favorite calorie counting website and check out what 1500 calories is like, especially of foods that would qualify as whatever you want, you're going to quickly learn that you can't eat that much of any of those foods. All right. So who should follow the military diet? Anybody? Uh, I'd say most people shouldn't. 
But if you need to weight, lose weight quickly and health be damned because you're not going to mess yourself up in a week or two or even three, possibly four of something like this, if you do it for too long, you will, then I understand why it's appealing and it wouldn't be entirely unadvisable, I suppose, because you are going to drop a fair amount of weight for sure on this diet. But remember that it's not going to be exclusively fat. A lot of that weight is going to be water and glycogen, like I mentioned earlier. And keep in mind that your body can only lose fat so quickly because there are physiological processes that need to occur to turn that body fat into usable energy and to burn it and eventually exhale it. For most people, that limit is a couple pounds a week, two, maybe three. For leaner people, it's probably around one without sacrificing a lot of muscle at least. And in people who are quite overweight, maybe four pounds a week is probably a ceiling, possibly five. And so again, keep in mind that when you follow the military diet, while you might like what you're seeing on the scale, that is not going to be all fat. Only maybe 30% of it at most is going to be fat. The rest will be water, glycogen, and food weight too, I should mention. Because remember, when you are generally eating more food, that means that you generally have more food in your body that's being processed. And of course, that weighs something. You reduce your food intake, you are generally going to have less food in your body, and that equals a lower average body weight. And as the military diet is not sustainable over the long term, not even over the long term of what it would take to maybe lose the weight that you want to lose. If you're like the average person that I hear from, you probably want to lose anywhere from 15 to 30 pounds. And this is not the way to do that. 15 pounds of 15 to 30 pounds of fat in particular, this is not the way to do that. You will absolutely suffer trying to lose that much fat on the military diet, and you are going to end up losing a fair amount of muscle as well, and especially if you're not exercising and not training your muscles, which is going to be quite difficult to do if you're following this diet because you're eating so little food. And so where does that leave us? Well, the military diet, again, can be useful if you just need to quickly lose some weight, maybe for an event that is coming up, or if you want to jumpstart your cut and just get a nice boost of motivation, see that scale drop a bit, lose uh, a couple handfuls of fat in the first couple weeks, and then switch to something that is more sustainable and more sensible. Now, what does that look like? Something more sensible and more sustainable? Well, there are a few points. One is I recommend you use an aggressive but not reckless calorie deficit. So something around 20%, eating 20, maybe 25% fewer calories than you're burning every day, as opposed to with the military diet. If you are the average woman, you're maybe gaining, you're maybe uh, burning anywhere from I don't know, 1,800 to 2,000 calories a day, especially if you're, if you're exercising. If you're not, it might be a bit lower. And so when you're eating 1,000 calories a day, you might be eating uh, half of what you're burning. That might be a 50 or even 40 or even 30% calorie deficit. And that's, that's extreme. That's too much. So again, I recommend you keep it aggressive, but not extreme, 20-ish percent. And if 20% is too tough on you, then make it 15. If you feel totally fine on 20%, you can push it up a little bit to 25% and speed up fat loss a little bit. And you shouldn't really find it any more difficult than 20%. You shouldn't notice anything in the way of muscle loss or any major impact uh, to, to your training any more than 20%. Another key point is eating enough protein because that is going to help your body retain muscle. It's going to speed up fat loss. It's going to keep you fuller. And how much is enough? Somewhere around one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day when cutting is optimal. Now, if that puts your protein intake too high, so let's say if you're a guy at 20% body fat or, uh, or above, or if you're a woman at 30% mm, or above, I would recommend that you just switch to about 40% of your daily calories from protein. I also recommend that you do plenty of resistance training. So if you're like most people, you have maybe three to six hours per week to exercise, use 80% of that time training your muscles. 
And if you want to get the most out of training your muscles, focus on heavy compound weightlifting. Focus on working with weights that are, let's say, at or above 70 to 75% of your one rep max and doing a lot of exercises that involve multiple joints and multiple muscle groups, squats, deadlifts, bench presses, overhead presses, barbell rows, and so forth. I also recommend that you do some cardio if you want to maximize fat loss, but not too much. So let's, let's cap it at two hours a week of cardio so you can minimize muscle loss and interference with your resistance training. And if you want to get the most fat loss out of that, do high intensity interval training. So long as it doesn't beat you up too much for hit, I very much prefer biking or rowing because they're low impact and research shows that in the case of biking in particular, it has likely the least amount of interference effect with your resistance training. Now, if you don't like HIT or if you can't do it for one reason or another, that's totally fine. You can do low intensity, steady state, but again, just don't do more than a couple hours a week. And last is you should consider adding a couple supplements to help you lose fat faster Most fat loss supplements, supposed fat loss supplements don't work, but there are a couple that have been shown to work quite well, and they are caffeine, synephrine, and yohimbine. And if you want to learn more about those in particular, just head over to legionathletics.com and search for each of them separately, and you'll find long form articles that I've written on each that explain how they speed up fat loss. And in the case of caffeine and synephrine, how they work synergistically. All right, well, that's it for the military diet. And for this video, I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do give it a like by clicking the thumbs up down below. And if you really liked it, then also subscribe to my channel. It's free, of course. And I post a couple videos a week on all kinds of things. So if you want to subscribe, just click the big red button over there and click the bell and YouTube will notify you when the next video goes live. I hope to see you then.